During ASCO 2021, we heard the exciting presentation of Empower 010, looking at adjuvant atezolizumab in patients with resected early stage lung cancer, as well as updates from Code Break 100 in advanced stage non small cell lung cancer patients whose tumors harbor KRAS G12C mutations. Empower 010 randomized 1,005 patients who had undergone resection for early stage lung cancer and had received up to four cycles of cisplatin-based adjuvant chemotherapy to either receive atezolizumab for up to one year or to continue with best supportive care. The study was designed with hierarchical testing and the first population looked at were those who had pd one expression on their tumors stage two to three A. This showed a disease-free survival hazard ratio of 0.66. In other words, a 34% reduction in disease recurrence or death, which was highly statistically significant. With that being positive, we moved to look at the next population, which were all comers with stage two to three A. And I'll note that this study included 40% of patients with stage three A, 12% had stage one B, and the rest were all stage two. I'll also note that the study had a combination of those with squamous histology and non-squamous histology. And for those with non-squamous histology, we did look for EGFR and ALK status and found that about 10% had EGFR mutations and about 3% had ALK translocations. That's relevant when we talk about the next patient population, which were all of those with stage two to three A. Here, the disease-free survival hazard ratio was 0.79. And when we looked at different populations there, we saw that the patients who had the highest PDL1 expression, greater than 50%, their disease free survival hazard ratio was 0.43. Again, it was 0.66 for all comers with PDL1 expression on their tumors, but it was not significant. It was 0.97 for patients whose tumors did not express PDL1. We also did not see benefit in those who had an EGFR mutation or ALK translocation. The results bringing in the stage 1B patients with the, so for the entire intent to treat population did not yet cross the significance boundary. And we are waiting for more events before we can determine whether or not that actually is significant. The overall survival likewise is immature and has not been formally tested, though the early trends do look hopeful. There was also, of course, toxicity but none that were unexpected when we think about what does atezolizumab do in all comers with other diseases and in other stages of non-small cell lung cancer. So to sum up, the disease-free survival hazard ratio for the key population, which were those with tumors expressing pdl one stage two to three A, the disease-free survival hazard ratio there was 0.66 in Empower 010. Code Break 100 updates looked at the 126 patients who were treated at 960 milligrams daily with the KRAS G12C drug Sotorosib. This was particularly exciting because we just got FDA approval in the United States for Sotorosib and have that drug available now for our patients. So the Code Break 100 trial median age for the patients was just over 63 years of age. Most had a prior smoking history. They had all had prior therapy up to three lines of treatment. And the vast majority had been treated with both chemotherapy and PDL1 checkpoint inhibitor previously. Of the valuable patients, which was 124, the overall response rate was 37%, with a duration of response of 11 months. Disease control was over 80%. These are very encouraging. Median progression-free survival, 6.8 months, and they presented the median overall survival at ASCO 2021 with a median overall survival of 12.5 months, so just over one year. When we think about toxicities, they were the ones we already knew about, LFT abnormalities, diarrhea. There were two patients with pneumonitis, but there were no treatment-related deaths, and only 7% of patients had to stop treatment because of toxicity. They also did subset analyses looking at patients with co-mutations, particularly in STK11 and KEEP1, and as well as TP53. And they showed that with TP53 or STK11, the response rates were still in that 40% range. But when there was a KEEP1 mutation, that dropped to 20%. 
They also showed a particularly interesting subset where they had an STK commutation, but had wild type keep one. And there the response rate was perhaps 50%, but it's, it's unclear if that's truly better than the 40% that was seen in all comers or not. And we'll have to see with time. But regardless, what we're seeing is that the, most of the commutations don't matter. Prior treatment didn't really matter. The only thing that was potentially prognostic for worse outcome was the KEEP1 mutation. But these results do support the recent FDA indication. We now have a drug uh, with a response rate of about 40% with a durable uh, duration of response for patients who do have KRAS G12C mutations in their tumor.